Hey guys, this is John, and welcome to a tradition unlike any other. It's Title Tuesday on chess.com. It is Tuesday, September 6th. My birthday was yesterday. I'm 36 years old now. This is my first Title Tuesday as a 36 year old. What a memorable occasion. <laughs> Let's get it started. We're playing Faustino Oro. I just instinctively played a Sicilian instead of a Scandi, but, you know, I like classical Sicilian, so let's do this. Thanks, everyone, watching live on Twitch. We are broadcasting over there and also in the future on YouTube. You guys know who you are, and I always appreciate your viewership. Let's do this. Okay, Castle. Now, Queen D2, I've had multiple games that go Queen D2, A5. So I'm somewhat familiar with this. Can try to poke and prod. Uh, I think bishop b5 is the best move here. My opponent does play it. And let's go bishop e6. Yeah, been a very long time since I actually faced this, but let's see what happens. Castles. Um, okay, we'll go here. This is a typical maneuver to try to disturb this. And a4. All right, interesting. Now, I think I should take that. I do think I should capture. Or do I want to play queen b8 first? Let's play, let's play queen b8 first. Maybe I won't rush it. Not worried about this because I have take. So queen b8, rook c8. I'm going to work up to that and, and maybe look for d5 later. Because when I take, probably white will, white will take this way. So this looks funky what I'm doing, but pretty typical, I'd say. Okay, g4. G4, G4. Should I take now and then D5? <clears throat> Could play that way. Okay, let's take. Almost certainly knight takes will be played. Now D5, G5, D4. I have a vague recollection of that type of, of idea. But let's see. Kind of playing by instinct here, which is usually the best way to play in Blitz. So if here, I'm going to go here. Possible pawn sacrifice ideas, but I kind of like the idea of responding tit for tat, you know? He attacks me, I attack him. This player looks pretty young, by the way, CM. So I'm definitely not taking any, anything for granted. There's always tricky players in Title Tuesdays. Bishop c5, okay. <clears throat> okay, I think let's take. And should I take e4 or advance d4? Tough call. Tough call. I'm going to advance here. Could maybe try to take and like win this pawn, but that looks a little shaky. I kind of like the cramping effect that this pawn has. Let's pre move this capture. It was there. Okay. So probably trying to bring the queen in somewhere annoying. That's fair. Let's go here now. I do think I do think white's gonna take the bishop. But I see my rook can maybe come up to a6 if white tries to go after the e6 pawn. So that could be a theme. Doing all right on the clock. I like this position. I think everything's good here. Not going to claim I'm better, but uh, so far it passes the smell test. That's for sure. Okay, knight c5, queen, queen c4. Let's go here. I want this, but I want this already protected or the ability to like come over here easily. It's kind of appealing. Yeah, White's trying to attack, but I don't know if that's the best plan here. Let's see if I can demonstrate why. And now here. So this, this could be a threat. Wait, definitely invested some tempi here, but this is hanging. I've got the discoveries on the queen. 
see what I can do with this. Probably take now on e4. Why not? There's various forks too, here or here maybe. But it has to be careful where they step. Actually, I think I'm forking no matter where the queen goes. The queen e2, there's knight g3. So I think I should win an exchange now. Taking here is neither, neither a good idea too. Okay, so there. Yeah, so let's go for this. Take. <clears throat> okay, we're going to activate here. Bring this up and try to attack. Probably take. Yeah, I like takes. And then I'm going to hide. Okay. <clears throat> Queen e4, maybe. Got a little time here, so I think I can play this a little calm, you know? Okay, check. Okay, check in there. This is that mate. It's not quite mate. Check, take. Let's go here. Mm -hmm. Ah. You know, I thought he initially, I thought he went A2. So that's why I was pausing here. I didn't think King A3 was an option. And indeed, it's not. <laughs> it gets mated. King A2 would have been kind of interesting. I think I am winning here, but I would need some accurate move because there, there are a couple threats. I mean, maybe I have to take time to do this. Although there is Rook E2. So not entirely clear after King A2. I was also thinking like maybe here, but I don't want to give time for this move. So in fact, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. All right, we're on to round two here playing Jungle Man 82. Don't think I have any history with this player. I don't recognize the username. Anonymous I am. So let's just open with D4. I've been playing a fair amount of D4 lately. And let's see what happens here. You get a Bogo Indian. Take with the queen. Okay, I think there was a game at the Sinkfield Cup exactly like this the other day. I've also played this myself in the past. Queen C2 now. Yeah, queen c2. Um, let's go a3. Seems useful. I'm going to delay the development of the light square bishop for a second. Let's just see how black plays it. Black goes there. Okay, is black going to go like knight c6 and then... No, it goes there. Okay, I'm going to castle. I'll, I think I'll try to play this somewhat ambitiously. Maybe taking on an isolated pawn. Although there, okay... Yeah, let's go here. Offering to take on this isolated pawn. Yeah, thanks again, Alpha Red, for the support. All right, so I can liquidate this whenever I want, but I think it's better to go here and try to line this up. Let's do that. When you have the isolated queen's pawn, often you want to look for moments to advance it with a uh, strong effect. So maybe I'm in a good position to do that here. Could do it now. Seems as good a time as any. Uh, I'm going to play it. Maybe there's other moves, but this does appeal to me. So let's go for it. Take, take. If we get a big trade, I should have some pressure on f7 in the end. Uh, could also maybe take with the rook here. But now let's take with the bishop. Just seems much more natural. 
So some pressure here and here. And my queen might relocate as well. Also, there's knight g5 in the air. Okay, so my opponent covers that. Queen b3 definitely stands out here. Going after this pawn. Uh, yeah, let's go there. If I can keep a tiny time, time advantage too, I like that. Knight a5, I can go queen a2 or maybe queen here. Okay, so there. I'm thinking about h3. Let's play that. It looks useful. Stops bishop g4. I would think black wants to move this knight now, but it's not simple. Yeah, okay, so now here I was thinking take, maybe. Take, 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 95. If king e8 at the end, do I have knight g6? I think that works. Is there anything better? I think that works, though, pretty well. Knight g6, how is black going to react to that? So take everything on f7, 95, king e8, knight g6. That knight is toast. Bishop e6, I take d8, take e6. Okay, I think I'm getting an endgame where I'm up a pawn here. I'll pre-move this. Black may not take it. They may move the king, but that looks disastrous. I think that's certainly losing for black if they move the king. So, looking good. Let's give the check. So if king e6, we're taking with check. That's a disaster too. So I think king e8 is like virtually forced here. And then this is the move I'm looking at. Which now that I think about it, it might force a winning endgame because it's literally a mate threat with rook takes e7. And if bishop e6... Um, bishop e6 might be the only move. Okay, goes there. Yeah, now I have a choice of different endgames. Probably rook takes. So we're going to get a rook endgame. Where I'm up a pawn. Let's see what I can do with this. This feels winning as well, or close to it. Up a pawn with an active rook, most importantly. If the roles were reversed here, black would probably have compensation. Like if I had the, the defensive rook, black would have some compensation. But with the active rook, I feel like this should this should be winning. And I've got a big time edge too, so let's press this. Okay, I'm going to go g4 to start. It's not easy for black to solve this. <clears throat> Let's just bring this up. Maybe b4? Um... Let's go b4. Usually you don't want to trade too much, but it's important to fix one of the pawns, as in, like, make it sit on a certain square. Let's bring this up. Okay, but now I can go here. Tie them down. Let's go back. Okay, now I think this is winning though, right? Let's go here. And now check. And I'm going to take this. Take. Let's 
And I think the easiest way to win this, guys, is actually to promote... Oh, wait. Shoot. That was not the easiest way. I hallucinated for a second. Might still be winning, though. Yeah, I think still winning. Let's go here. Okay. I hallucinated that uh, I think it's still winning. But... I thought that Black could not uh, defend against Rook over and Pawn push, but I realized Black's Rook was still attacking the Pawn. Still attacking the Pawn. But okay, we get the win. I think that is still decisive. King G6, this comes with a mate threat. And that buys time to free up the Rook. Whew, okay. So we notched the victory. I feel pretty good about that one. I think I was in control, and I think uh, the pressure that I had on F7 was the decisive factor culminating in this bishop takes f7 idea and then knight g6. Round three of title Tuesday, I'm playing v pranav. I think this is the famous buddy pranav from the chess bra channel. He's sporting the uh, chess bra logo there. Tough player. I don't recall ever having played him. So let's see what we can do here. Okay, exchange slob by transposition. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I didn't have a choice. At least after my opponent took on d5. <laughs> okay. Now I'm playing this kind of solid. I'm going for the approach where um, you keep the light square bishop in the chain for a moment. Okay, now... Yeah, now I think I will take and go here. Oh, thank you for the raid, by the way, Pharmacist. Thank you very much. I'm trying not to talk too much here. Big time title Tuesday competition. But uh, thanks again. Okay, Rook C8. This is pretty normal stuff. So I don't want to burn too much time here. <clears throat> okay, let's bring this back now. I'm not going to take this knight yet. White might go for f4, but let's bide our time for a moment. Figure out what avenue of counterplay we want. Okay, let's go here. We're going to play around this knight on e5 for the time being. Because once white can take with the f-pawn, it's not as appealing to capture. I didn't take on the last move because there's some direct problems sometimes doing that. Okay, let's go g6. Here. So if f5, hmm, let's actually go f5. I have a bunch of pawns on light squares, which in some ways I don't like with the bishop here, but then again, that was always the case since I played e6, so it's not, uh, I don't think it's anything to worry about too much. Let's go here. I'm trying to be mindful of this square. I don't want a tactic to happen there, like bishop f5 or knight f5. I assume he's going to try to attack me with this move. That's what I would expect. Okay, so let's go here. Play this back. I can clog up the middle with this move. That's always appealing. Play this first, though. 
I want to make sure if this happens that I'm kind of ready for that to open up. Okay, now let's jump. If a trade happens here, I probably take it with this pawn to try to get my knight here to uh, d5. Okay. I don't see any danger to my king yet, but I'm trying to be careful. Let's prepare the doubling. Queen b2 might be played. Yeah. Um, could go queen g7 or this first. Let's go here first and meet this with this. This is just the one major tactic I got to watch in this position, guys. Didn't have a whole lot of time to calculate it, but I think I got things covered. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to go for this. Uh, I don't know if that was a good idea. I might be punished for this. Knight takes e4, I wonder. Knight takes e4, knight e5, though. Okay, this is not clear at all. I'm taking a risk with this move for sure. Here, I wonder if I can take. That might be a good move. Is there. Okay, so knight d5 now. Gotta play this. <clears throat> Let's come here. There's a check here now. Maybe. But I'm trying to activate my pieces. Pre-move this capture. Super tense here still. Okay. Let's take. Oh, he's getting through a d5. Shoot. Yeah, this, this gets mated. I didn't see what else to do there, though. Mmm... Yeah, if I, I think I'm losing here because if I take, there's d5. So this got me in the end. I didn't find a good move to uh, slow that down. Maybe I got to take, but then queen takes. It still felt like my opponent was getting to the back rank. Put that up on the scoreboard. Pretty close. Like, very tense situation here. Rook c5 might be just a really good move. B6 was my instinct. That's what I played. I wonder if I have something better here. I wonder if it's even too wild to do this. This might be a little coffee house, but in Blitz, the initiative is everything. I hit the queen. I also line up here. Doesn't feel quite right, though. Even something like this might be good for white. I'm still facing issues. Let's check it real quick. that one wow rook c5 is just a good move best move here best move everything else is fine for me roughly speaking okay well i don't feel too bad about that because he is plus three here yeah, he's good he's definitely good i knew this was losing but bishop takes g4 i didn't see anything at this point. I guess queen a6 is probably technically the best move. But uh <laughs> wasn't feeling too good at this point. 
Let's see what the mistake was. Looks like maybe bishop b5. Although here, I'm still afloat, but I should not play queen a5. I should retreat, which in light of the game makes sense, but that's hard to do psychologically. Like queen e7 allows me to meet rook c5, probably with take and then, um, oh, no, bishop takes. Okay. Just provides much better defense here. Yeah, so rook c5, just a good move by him. And I wasn't able to recover after that. Otherwise, pretty tight game. Pretty close game. On to round four in this late title Tuesday, playing FM Nate Solon. Shout out to Nate. Let's tell him GL. So I don't know him very well, but uh, I see him on Twitter all the time. He posts some really instructive, informative tw uh, tweets and threads. So yeah, shout out to him. All right, let's play Bishop G2. Maybe some reverse Grunfeld type action. We'll play like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I guess I'll go C4. Catalan. Catalan style. Only problem is I don't really know how to play these positions. <laughs> Bit of an issue, huh? And he, by the speed of his moves, it looks like he does know. He does know how to play. But okay, we have a position. We're playing chess. I can confirm we are playing the board game chess. Let's go rookie one. Try for e4. Now, if I play e4, I wonder if I have to reckon with knight b4 at all. I'm not going to worry about it yet, but I want to have this on my radar. Is d5 a threat? Like, Did he just blunder d5, d6? He might have. I guess he has, hmm. I guess he has knight b4, knight c2 at the end, huh? Let's go here first. Then I'll send this here. I'll show d5 afterwards, but that was an interesting line. I just don't think it quite worked for me. It's the only, uh, only thing. Very important thing. Okay, I'm going to go here. I want to stabilize this. It does allow c3, so I don't know that I'm thrilled about this move, but I want to stabilize things a bit. This isn't a risk stream. I'm playing, yeah, I'm playing chess. It's not a risk stream, although shout out to risk. Great board game. Shout out to Stratego as well. One of my favorites. Okay, Rook D8. Keeps the tension. <clears throat> now, D5 definitely suggests itself here, but I don't think that's like the right move. Also, can I take here? He's, he really wants Knight takes D4, I guess, is the point. That's fair. That's fair. Okay, I'll go here. Yeah, I think he's playing pretty well. Like, this all looks sound in my estimation. I need some counterplay. Let's go here. Very crowded board. Only one pair of pawns has been traded so far. Ooh, is he going to play d5? Guess we'll find out. I was thinking maybe here, although he has perhaps an in-between move. Okay, so I think I should take. Let's go here now. Now I'm going to go here. Protect this and this. Blockade for the time being. <clears throat> it's 
Let's go here. Yeah, I'm not liking how this is shaping up. He has this move now, maybe. I'm on the defensive here, folks, big time. Still tricky, though. I feel like I got to break this up with the quickness. I got to break up those pawns ASAP. So here, I'll take here. <clears throat> okay, that was a positive turn of events. I think I might be getting slightly back in things. Let's go here. Go here. Still need to win C2 somehow. It's not going to be simple. This is not possible yet. It's a good move. Ah, shoot. GG. Yeah, I was under some pressure there. And I think he handled that pretty well because uh, I couldn't figure out a way to dissipate the pressure right around here after knight d7. I mean, it was already under significant pressure anyways with the pawn, but I couldn't find a way to simplify. And we're on to round five. Playing FM Kiko Viega. All right, let's try to right the ship here. I've had two losses in a row. On to the next round. Um, let's play Sicilian again. I think I'll go classical again if allowed. But we have the Moscow system. I often take with the knight here. Taking with the queen's more popular, but I think knight takes is perfectly fine too. No issues with it. I might try to keep the tension a little bit. So, okay, so rook c8. I think this is how I used to play this variation. All right, now bishop e7. Just a different way of handling this where you don't immediately take the pawn when it comes to d4. Usually you will take, but it's playable to, to do this as well. So let's see what happens. Maybe expand this way. Because if you don't take... It leaves a little bit of doubt for white as to where they should put the knight because they don't have that natural c3 square to work with. So something to be said for that. Yeah, so now I'm thinking about b5. Um, seems decent, so let's go for it. Grab a little bit of space. White's got the two center pawns, which is normally you know a bit of an edge. So I want to try to compensate by pushing on the wing. Grab some territory over there. And I like my time edge here. My opponent's thinking a little bit already. Ooh, takes. That's very creative. Okay, I wasn't at all worried about that. I see the point. They're going to play e5. But I just wasn't concerned about that. So a variety of ways I can respond here. Probably going to keep my bishop. So where to put it? Let's just go back to e7. And then which way to take? Um, it's kind of a tough call. Let's take with the knight. Okay. Whoops. 
Almost dragged my rook. Let's go here. Defend the pawn. Mm -hmm. A4. I was thinking perhaps this move now. Just processing some lines here. B4, knight C4, queen A6, something like that. I think this is the most combative move. I could also take on d4. It might be decent too. I don't want to use too much time here. Let's play this one. Pushes. Hmm. And go here. So I'm trying to create some sort of weakness in the white pawn structure. I gave back some time, though, in the process of doing that. Try to speed up. Now, white thinking. This pawn could be a liability. That's a little extended. There's obviously a lot of tension here. Both of us have taking options, maybe even pushing options. Like I, I could think about C4 in the future. Probably not going to play it yet, but could be on the agenda. These knights are kind of stepping on each other's toes. So I don't think these are very well placed at the moment. So I would expect to see white making one of these captures or maybe a move with this rook. Those are my predictions. Okay, moves a knight. So I can take d4. That was my main thought here. Let's do that. <clears throat> Bring this here. Okay. Rook d5, knight g5. Knight g5 could be a threat, huh? Maybe I should throw an h6 now. Yeah, probably smart. Don't think white can get away with this, because I think I take, and this is covered. there. What's the point of that? Guess White's going to put a rook on C1, but I'm not sure. So let's put a little pressure here to compensate. Interesting. Tense position. I feel like I'm fine, but... Let's see what we can do. Okay, so now I can win a pawn if I want. I feel like I should go for that. Oh, shoot. That just wins a piece. All right, let's not panic. Might still have chances here. Let's not completely panic yet. Go attack F2. My, my pawn could still be quite dangerous, actually. But this was completely unplanned, of course. Hope I don't get mated here. Oh, he has... Okay, he had knight c4. Now knight c4 I take. Oh, I think I swindled him. Let's give a check first. Um, push.
Going out of room with that. There we go. Whew. All right, that was the swindle. <laughs> I'm sure I was dead to rights there. But we get, <laughs> we get a Scandi swindle, even though the game was actually a Sicilian. We'll still call it that. <laughs> Again, the initiative just matters so much in these games. Yeah, I don't know. Even here, knight c4, king here. Eh, it's probably just winning, but it wasn't so obvious at the time, the backward knight move. White mistimed that. And by the time we got here, I know it looks ridiculous, but how does white solve this issue? With the knights stepping on each other's toes. Yeah, we'll take it. That's right. We will take it. <laughs> Round six, incoming. Playing FM, Alexander Yurvosk. Okay. Let's play D4 on this one. Oh, thank you, Omni Jaw on Twitch. Greatly appreciate it. Play Queen's Gambit. Okay. I'm okay with this line. Ooh, semi tarash though. All right. Mm-hmm. All right, so let me think what I want to do against this line, because <clears throat> I guess I'll just play down the main road. I feel like black's pretty solid in this variation these days, but I haven't studied anything else against this recently. So we'll just play like this. Now, I have a game where I played A4 here and A5. I played this like five years ago when I was playing a tournament in Norway. So I'm going to follow that. I'm going to try to do this little minority attack, get something going on the queen side just a little bit. Let's go here to defend. Yeah, a5. Looks like nothing special, but, you know, maybe some ideas here. Attack the queen. I can perhaps start to throw these pawns down the board and maybe create some weaknesses in the black position. That might be the plan. H4 is actually pretty common in these setups, so I might go for that. And black, in turn, might start advancing this pawn. We'll see. This is all pretty solid. I mean, maybe black will try to attack it like rook c3, but everything looks fairly normal for the time being. Okay, so moment of truth. Do I play g4? It's a pretty appealing move, I gotta be honest. It just feels correct. Well, I don't know about correct, but it feels like the move I want to play, so let's do it. <laughs> it feels like the correct blitz move under the circumstances. Now, undoubtedly, I'm weakening my king. This is really only possible because black's queen is so far away, and black has a lot of pieces massed on the other side of the board, not near my king. Whereas for me, it's the opposite. It hits the bishop. Probably here. I could see maybe queen b8 being played in this position by black. Trying to offer a queen trade. I might take and then play knight e5 and look for g5 later. That's a possibility. But this is coming very soon. Up on the clock. Okay, so that was played. Yeah, and do I have to trade? I think... I might be able to do this thanks to rook takes d4 and then g5. Maybe that's actually playable. It's a bit risky, though. Either that trade and then knight e5, but I don't, I don't see a whole lot of edge there. Nah, actually, I'm going to go for that. I think that's maybe the way to play it. 
I tend to do well in these kind of semi-end games. Denying this square. I'm trying to get ready for this. <clears throat> Let's push. Knight e7. I'm thinking knight c4 here. Could trade, but that doesn't feel quite right. Feels like I can do better, so let's go here. Interesting. Very interesting. E5, maybe? E5 might be decent here. Takes, bishop h7, takes, takes, check. Oof, that's complicated. Let's go back here. Sharp stuff here, guys. Bishop c8 seems kind of passive, so I would assume bishop a8 will be played. <clears throat> okay, let's take. Now, knight h4 is kind of dangerous for me. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do against that. I'm not sure. Let's go here. I can win that pawn. Shoot. Didn't see that. Take, take, knight takes g5. All right, so now I got to play down a pawn. Let's restrict him a little bit. Got to try to draw this end game now. Going to be tough. Especially because my king is kind of cut off, potentially. So is his, though, actually, now that I think about it. He got his king cut off a little bit. Just trying to be annoying here. That's it. I don't think you can make progress. At least not the way it's currently being played.
Okay, looking dryish now. Yeah, totally drawn. All right, I hold on for the draw. Tough hold, tough hold, but I think my defense was pretty good there. So I am happy about that. And we're right on to round seven. Looks like that might have been the last game of the round. So nice to get a hold when you got a lot of eyeballs on you, right? Watching your technique, judging your every movement. <laughs> All right, let's play Scandy. You guys knew it was coming. Thank you, uh, Yusufus, for the sub, by the way. Greatly appreciate that. Very important to be able to draw rook endings down a pawn. Okay, we're playing one of the principal lines in the Scandi these days. White gets the bishop pair, but it's not easy to figure out what to do with the d pawn, and the bishops are kind of stacked in a little bit like impotent in some cases. Are they really from the Vatican? Is this Vatican City? Oh, it is. Yeah, I would doubt it. I would doubt they're from Vatican City, but you never know. This could be the Pope. We can't rule it out. Okay, Bishop D3, that's an interesting one. I think I'm just going to take and play Knight BD7 or Knight C6. Which one's better? Because they're both legitimate here. Let's go Knight C6. Some pressure on d4. Castles. Okay, so key decision. I think I'm going to castle short in this case because I don't have my light square bishop, which could be used to attack this. Since we traded, I'm going to go short because I think I have a little less pressure here than normal. So it looks sensible. 95. Hmm. Very direct. All right. I'm your Huckleberry. Let's go here. Kind of poses a question as to how white wants to handle this. If the bishop moves back here, let's say I might take b2. Wouldn't rule it out. Because e5 would also be hanging after that. I think it should be fine here. Structure's good. Bishop's a little awkward. Knight's on a nice square. Attacking the bishop. I, don't, I wouldn't say I'm better here necessarily, but yeah, if white has to play that move, I feel like I have little to fear. Okay. Bring this over. Hmm. Let's go here. I'm trying to be a little tricky with like the tension between these guys or these ladies with knight takes c3 maybe coming in at some point. Like I could play it now. Might want to make some luft first though. Or even stack my rooks. White's going to do the same. Hmm. Let's go here. Hmm. Okay, now I feel like I should take. Let's capture. So if white takes, I can throw in the check. King f1. Take c6. Take d1. Take take. I have rook d5 at the end. f4, g5. Okay, white's not going to risk that. White is not risking that situation. They want the file. I think white just wants the file in the end. 
which is fair. All right, let's take. Now on the doubling, I'll probably take. We're in an even rook end game. I don't think I have to worry about giving up the file so much because uh, I actually think white's going to take with the pawn. Because rook takes my king just walks over, so this should be fine. White offers a draw. Hmm. I honestly don't think I'm better here. I'm trying to figure out if I want to play or what I could even play. Yeah, I'm going to take it. I already thought too long. We'll take the draw. Because uh, I was thinking if I can play this and then try to go for c5, but the problem is white goes c4, and I think I'm a little late to the party. C5, D5. Not sure about this. I have some vague ideas of attacking here, but I think a draw is completely fair. Not the most exciting game. Ah, oh, engine likes my position. Okay, I didn't expect it to be minus one. Wait, what? Rook D8, why not C4? King H7. Huh. And it's one of those things, too, the longer you think about it, the less likely you are to take it. I don't know. Now that I see the engine evaluation, of course, I'm not super happy, but I don't think I assess this correctly either. And we're playing Mr. Lammy. This is round eight. Mr. Lammy, who is that? Oh, they got this avatar. I've seen other players with this avatar. All right, D4. Um, Let's play D5. I'm not going to mess around with D6 or any flank systems right now. We will allow the exchange slav if White wants to play it. 8 out of 11 still possible. Thank you, Alpha Red. I'm glad you believe in me. Oh, and we do get the exchange slot. Brutal. I was just joking, Mr. Lammy. <laughs> you didn't actually have to play it. I was just kidding. That's okay. I play exchange slot too, so if you play the slot, you just have to be ready for it. Unless you enter the slot in a different move order, then it's possible to avoid it. Okay, yeah, this is all pretty... Pretty standard stuff. I think bishop e2. Yeah, it's very hard to, to create winning chances out of this, but I'll try. We shall try. Mm hmm. Okay, let's go here. Play h6. Might as well. Now, okay, at least now there's some sort of imbalances that could be created. I'm going to go here. Just to start maybe tearing that down a little bit. Okay, th this is a fight. This is at least something we can work with, perhaps. <clears throat> 97, maybe. Yeah, let's go here. Stops this, also guards this square. Pretty effective. Could play b6. Um, if I don't play b6, white might play b6 at some point, so I think I should play this. And I might start expanding over here at some stage. We shall see. Why is his avatar a dinosaur butt? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's a good question. Okay, he's maneuvering. I feel like I want one of his knights here, so. But also trade everything off down the file. Let's go here first, though. Plays a4. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to take this knight. E5, interesting here, too. 
But again, I could trade everything. I'm just not quite sure if that's... Oh, maybe this move. He has knight d3 coming. Still feels like I should play this, so let's do it. But he can take, take, play knight d3, and then rook c1. If rook c1, can I take? I don't think so. I have the pressure down on the bishop, but I feel like he can get out of that. Yeah, so let's go here. It's like this slim battle for the file. Not a whole lot else going on. But I, I kind of like having the knights in this situation, at least. Like, that is somewhat handy. Let's go here. Queen c2. Let's go here now. Because I can try to use this square, perhaps. If it remains this closed, I definitely don't mind having two knights. Does he have queen c6? I don't think queen c6 works, so let's go here. He can try this, but it's not actually threatening anything. Oh, uh, no, it's th threatening this. Okay, so if I take... If I take and then play knight b8... Going on there. Hmm. So if you're here and I'm covering C eight. Hmm. Interesting situation. Ninety five, yep. <clears throat> okay, so I want to go collect that pawn. That's what I'm trying to do. He knows it. I think that pawn will be lost. He can defend it for a little while, actually. Um, let's go here. Play actively. I'm trying to win this guy. Feels winning. There we go. Win the bishop. There we go. Nice. Ooh, okay. Another long game. And yeah, white took a risk by playing queen c6. Queen c6 is a bold move, but it might be too bold. 
because that pawn got overextended. Very close quarters here. This is like a knife fight in a, in a phone booth. But I was able to round up this pawn eventually. I'm pretty happy with how I played this, actually, from this point forward. F6. Maybe around here, white has something very specific to try to make it awkward for me to hold the pawn. But I think white's on the defensive. So we move to five out of eight. Round nine, let's play d4. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. I told my Twitch chat to, uh, if they could, let me know if my game had started on chess.com because I was honestly concerned. <laughs> it looked like the tournament had paused for a second uh, and more than the actual break, which happens after round eight. Okay, so we have a QGD. Let's play knight c3. This is some old, old theory, some real classical stuff. Let's take, I'll just play this real simple. Yeah. Um, okay, how do I want to handle this? You guys are going to think I'm boring, but I'm going to play it this way. We're going to play it like this. <clears throat> take or play castles. Let's castle. Okay, now I'm going to take. Let's give my opponent the hanging pawns here. So this is a classic structure. I'm not used to playing this structure when um, we've traded like three or, or two, two pair of minor pieces. So this will be interesting to me. Go queen a4. But the idea is to press up on these pawns long term. <laughs> nice jobs. I see your comment. <laughs> okay, bishop a6 maybe, then rook c7, I suppose. Queen a3 could be played. That's an idea here. Knight b4 will be the answer, though. Let's do this. It seems a little annoying for white, or for black, rather. So let's play this way. I'm going to go here now. Maybe work up to b4. We shall see. Maybe, maybe. This g4 square is covered by my queen, so that's handy. Oh. <laughs> it's black magic, guys. I said that and it came true. <laughs> Just right on cue. Now, you're wondering at home why that doesn't happen to you. And I have no good answer for you. Sometimes fortune just smiles on you. <laughs> but as you guys know, I harp on this all the time. Long range moves. This was not a long range diagonal move that my opponent missed. It's a lateral move. But still, long range cross board move. I guarantee if you're watching this and you're not a title player, this applies to you even more than this unfortunate FM. Uh, watch those long-range moves. Most people only look at areas of the board at a time. Obviously, this player is good enough where you know they're hardly ever going to make a blunder like that, even in a blitz game, but it happened to occur. I just immediately resigned. All right. JB can speak blunders into existence. Yeah. <laughs> that felt pretty powerful, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm a little scared of how powerful that felt. <laughs> Round 10. Etole, genial. Grandmaster Marie, Sibag. Okay. Good luck. Looks like I got paired down in rating, even though I'm playing a GM. I don't think I've ever played her. So let's see what happens. Um, okay, play knight f3. Uh, shall I play exchange? I feel like you guys have had enough of the exchange slav, but... Now, nah, let's, let's keep it a little more complicated. Let's keep it a little bit more complex. I'll play g3. We'll play this system. Mm -hmm. um, it's castle. Uh, 
Okay, let's go e4. I'm going to play, hmm. Let's go queen e2. So black's up a pawn, but we have the nice central pawn mass that, of course, we like to uh, use whenever possible. Have to try to create problems for black here. Oh, I'm sorry. My um, screen capture is a little bit off. There we go. go h4. I'm going to start trying to gradually advance on that wing. I did this in that one game, and we'll see if it's any good here. Okay, so if 95, hmm, 95 rook d8, and I can play h5 though, so that's interesting. Okay, I feel like I should play this move, because if black takes right now, pawn takes, traps this knight, so that looks convenient. This might open up this and this, or h5 coming up it was there all right sharp hmm. okay i'm gonna take and then push play in the center Yes, I think this means, like, brilliant star. Takes. Knight takes was my instinct here. So let's play it. Hmm. Tough call. Let's take with the rook. Play this back now. I could go to d2, but somehow this feels better. Doesn't interfere with my pieces as much because I think I want to go e5 if allowed. Rook d8, e5, bishop d6. Is that playable? That looks super suspicious for black, but maybe I think that's what black's intending. e5, bishop d6. Okay, let's go here. Now, if here, I wonder if I can take... Ah, it doesn't quite work. Well, maybe. I don't know. That's complicated. Yeah, white's at a crossroads here. Take, and then e5, there's rook d3. Rook d3, queen c6. Take, take. Might be nothing. Okay, so let's go here. Yeah, I'm not doing a good job in this of creating problems. Take here. Yeah, I'm really playing um, too slowly here, both on the board and in the position. Still have the two bishops, though, so I should try to complicate. I got to take this.
Got to reposition the light square bishop now. Bishop g4, bishop f3. <clears throat> Don't know that my opponent should have allowed that. Let's dive in. Attack the pawn. Um, shoot. Don't know what to do. Oh, that's check. Kind of a weird situation here. I can play for rook d8. It's funny. Oh, did I did I trap black? I think I trapped my opponent. Crazy. Huh. I actually won that. Oh my. I completely swindled that game. I feel a bit bad. Because I was getting outplayed in the middle game, but. Hey, that's Blitz, and that's Title Tuesday. We moved to 7 out of 10. <laughs> I saw this one trap idea after some very frenzied uh, time pressure. I saw this one trap idea where Rook D8 and Black had just taken away the A4 square for her queen. I guess the bishop is a, an issue, too. I feel like I missed a chance in the middle game. Like, maybe around here. Rook, D, Rook D1 was probably overthinking it. I think I should just play Rook D2. Um, let me very quickly go to that. Even in the final position, there was a little bit of play, although I should be winning. What about when all this happened? I feel like I was actually getting some pretty good play here. Okay, I should transfer the bishop to do this or this or something like this. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, rook c8, rook c8. Aha. Uh -huh. Didn't see rook c8. Here I panicked because I didn't see anything good. Uh, rook d8, okay. Yeah, rook d8 should be played there. That makes sense. And now black should be winning, but it's not simple. It's not a trivial win. In time pressure, this was hanging though with check. I should have I should have played king g4 right away. Wow. All right, so I seized my chances. Let's just check the middle game real quick. Sharp stuff. Okay, Rook D1 is actually the best move. A4, E5. Yeah, I didn't play E5. It seems obvious because the knight's in some trouble. So I was actually worried about this move. But maybe that was the moment I could have improved. Whew. All right. 7 out of 10. I got a chance to best my high score. Yeah, Alpha Red. I'm starting to believe. And here we have it. Round 11 of Title Tuesday coming up any moment. Okay. Playing at, wow, I got paired down. FM Vazabanga. All right, let's make the most of this opportunity. It was an opportunity regardless of who I play, but I'm getting paired down here. Obviously, a player who's doing really well, probably strong. But guys, I got a chance to go um, grab eight points here. So let's, let's see if we can do it. Go knight c6. Yeah, this variation. Um, I can't recall the theory, so I'm just going to quickly play knight f6. It allows them to take... But I know this is fine. I know this is playable. So let's go e6. Thank you, guys. Thanks for all the love in the chat. I do appreciate it. Let's play f5 now. I'm just going to immediately block off that bishop. I don't want to have to think about it very much. Let's 
Let's play Rook C8. Okay, so we're kind of looking at a kind of thorny position here. <clears throat> Let's go here. Castle. You'll recall I had um, that endgame victory with that exchange Slav. I also did lose that game against V Pranov. So it's just been one of those days, apparently, with this structure. Okay, let's go here. And I need counterplay, so I'm going to probably send that knight in, just like I tried to do in that other game. Let's do it right away. Send this here. It's annoying on that square for sure. And it might pivot back to d6. Bear that in mind. Also, white might very well try 95 somewhere. So we got to keep that in mind. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to take probably f5. Let's do that. Now, where's White going to put that Rook? I would assume G3. That would be my prediction. No, G2. Hmm. Okay, let's go here. I want to be able to play Rook G8 and offer a trade if needed. I think that's just the smartest way to play this. Okay. <clears throat> I got to take that, of course. I'm just thinking about which way I want to take. Let's take this way. Now, is he thinking about queen h5, perhaps? That seems a little aggressive, but I could see it being played. Okay, let's trade down here. Bring this over. Interesting. I mean, there's some residual pressure here and here, but stuff is starting to come off the board. Time's, time's okay. Whoa. E4, wow, that's a creative move. I see the point. Definitely see the point. I can get kind of active against this move, though. Let me think. Ooh, this is a tough call. I think I should just take. Take that way specifically. Keep this defended. I don't know which way he was intending to take back. Because he could take with a knight, but then take. That doesn't look quite right. He takes a lot of pieces away from his king. Takes with a bishop. Okay. It's knight d5. Hmm. We take here? Still has knight d5. Okay, let's go back. I'll try to be solid.
feel like he's going to play this move. Although I don't think it's good. My bishop's coming to c6. That's what I'm trying. He might go for the end game, actually. He might try to trade queens. Queen g3. Stressful. If I get his knight to move, I like my chances here. Try to bring my king around. This feels winning, guys. Can I do this? Push. How do you stop the pawn? Well, he's got to go there. Um, let's do this. Yes. We got him. Got him. <sighs> Another endgame win. Yes. Eight out of 11. Oh, I'm pumped, guys. That John display of emotion here. <laughs> Eight out of 11. Oh, I had that key breakthrough in the end game. It was close. I think he might have had drawing chances if at this point. It might be losing the whole way, but if he can get this, this pawn, because he's going to lose his knight for the B pawn, right? He's going to lose that no matter what. Bishop D3 or Bishop A2 are coming. Those are both threats here. Now, he instinctively came back with his king, right? But he should probably play this move. Uh, pitch Bucket, thank you very much. Gifting five subs. If he plays that move, hmm, take king here so that if I promote, he trades and then takes d5. I guess I take here. It's still winning, I think, though. I think it's still winning. I'm promoting next move. And we get to keep that one solitary pawn. Thank you, Alpha Red, for the 10 gifted. Oh, thank you guys so much. Yeah, I'm really happy about that. Uh, kind of a slower start. I had um, two out of four after four rounds. Just two points, but... Yeah, the end games. Thank you, Tip Guti. The end games were really good for me in this tournament. Uh, so here are your final standings. Congratulations to Daniel Dubov, winning with 9.5 out of 11. Congrats to Hikaru as well, getting second with the same score. Uh, probably tiebreak thing. And Gata, Gata in third. Congrats to him, getting the bronze. So we finished. Let's see if I can see the final standings. Didn't actually see that there. It might have been there, and I just am too excited that I, <laughs> I passed right over it. There we go. I got ninth. Hey, I got in the top 10. Awesome. Oh, that made my day. Top 10 in Title Tuesday. It says 178 players, but there were you know, assuredly more players than that in the mix. Cool. Top 10, we'll take it. Hey, it's not money, but we don't play chess for money. We play for uh, the game, the love of the game. When we start talking about winning title Tuesday, I need a little more stability. A little more stability and we can get there. Whew. Okay. I'm tempted to conduct uh, an intense analysis of that game. But for the, the YouTube viewers, I think I'm going to wrap it up here and just say thanks so much, guys, for uh, following my recent title Tuesday performances. I'm going to chop this video up, edit it as usual, post it. And hey, let's, uh, let's shoot for eight and a half out of 11 or higher next time. This is my...
best title Tuesday result ever. Eight out of 11. Uh, I got a little fortunate with the pairings, not going to lie. The pairings favored me from like a, a maximum point gathering perspective. I wasn't expecting to get paired down in rating in uh, the final couple games. But that's the way the cookie crumbles, and we took full advantage. So thanks again, everyone. Twitch, I'm going to stick around, but YouTube, appreciate it. And I'll see you guys again soon. Thanks for uh, watching this tradition unlike any other.